French aristocrat and renowned chemist Antoine Lavoisier was a prominent figure during the 18th century. He spread century. the use of the metric system throughout Europe in the 1790s. Lavoisier also researched combustion and disproved the phlogiston theory. He recognized the elements of hydrogen and oxygen and discovered that they are components of water. He was the first person to attempt to make a list of elements, which he included in his textbook Elements of Chemistry. However, his most notable contribution to science could be considered to be the law of conservation of mass. On August 26, 1743, Antoine Laurent Lavoisier was born into the wealthy family of Jean and Emile Lavoisier. Lavoisier had a privileged childhood until tragedy struck. When Lavoisier was five, his mother, Emile Lavoisier, perished. He and his sister were sent to be raised by their aunt and grand. When Lavoisier was a teenager, tragedy struck yet again when his younger sister, Marie, died. Lavoisier, at the age of 11, enrolled into one of the best schools in France, Collège des Quatre Nations, or Collège Mazarin. There, he focused mainly in law, as he was expected to become a lawyer like his father. However, when Lavoisier acquired his law degree in 1763, he did not pursue law. Instead, he studied sciences such as geology under Jean Guitard. After studying under Guame Rule, Lavoisier also became interested in chemistry. After his education, Lavoisier sought membership in the Royal Academy of Sciences, an elite group of strictly 54 scientists. His opportunity to join arose when the Academy offered a reward to the person who wrote the best essay on solving Paris's street lamp issues. On May 18, 1768, at the age of 24, Lavoisier won the contest and was accepted into the Academy. That same year, Lavoisier joined what was known as Ferme Générale, a tax collecting firm in France. The money he received as a tax farmer allowed him to fund his scientific research. Also, Lavoisier met his wife, Marianne, who was the daughter of one of the farmer generals, Jacques Poset. The two were wed on December 16, 1771. Madame Lavoisier helped her husband's research by taking notes, illustrating his works, and translating them into other languages. In 1772, Lavoisier began to research on what happened to air during combustion. He did this by burning phosphorus and sulfur and turning them into acids. Lavoisier also studied the process of calcination with lead and tin. He found that when you weighed the amount of calx and compared it to the metal's original weight, the calx was heavier. This was also true for Lavoisier's previous experiment with phosphorus and sulfur. He discovered that the acids weighed more than the metals. He then hypothesized that acids and calxes form when air joins with the burning substance. Lavoisier's findings were in strong contradiction to George Stahl's phlogiston theory, which stated that all flammable substances consisted of phlogiston. It was said that during combustion, the phlogiston would leave the substances, thus leaving the ashes. If that were true, how come the acids and calxes weighed more than they originally were? This could only mean that the phlogiston theory was completely and utterly false. Up until the 1750s, air was considered to be its own element. However, when chemist Joseph Bloch found fixed air, or carbon dioxide, in 1754, Lavoisier began to suspect that air was not an element, and instead made of multiple gases, he also believed that the fixed air was the gas in combustion and calcining. When scientist Joseph Priestley shared his discovery of a gas given off by Mercury Cox with Lavoisier over dinner one night, Lavoisier began to consider that the gas was responsible in combustion and calcination. Lavoisier then carried out Priestley's experiment and reported his findings to the Academy of Sciences on April 26, 1775. He said that the air 
allowed flames to burn brightly and allowed mice to live in jars longer than they would with common air. Because of this, he described the gas as highly respirable. Lavoisier then worked to prove that air was made up of multiple gases by taking air apart and putting them back together again. He did this by reversing his experiment and allowing mercury to turn into mercury calx. He found that the air that allowed flames to burn had disappeared, leaving only fixed air. He then allowed mercury calx to turn back into mercury. Lavoisier found that the amount of air produced by this process was equal to the amount of air that had disappeared. This led to the recognition of oxygen. In 1766, British scientist Henry Cavendish discovered inflammable air or hydrogen. In 1781, Cavendish burned this inflammable air and found that as a result, dew was formed. Cavendish believed that the gases of hydrogen and oxygen contained water. Lavoisier then repeated Cavendish's experiment and inferred that the hydrogen and oxygen combined together to form water. Lavoisier proved that water was made up of these two components by forming water with them. He used static electricity to form the compound. Antoine Lavoisier wrote the Elements of Chemistry in 1787. In it, he included his idea of naming elements after what they consisted of, his list of 31 elements, and his Law of Conservation of Mass, in which his studies on stoichiometry and his experiment with water were very important. In 1793, Lavoisier's life took a turn for the worst beginning with King Louis XVI's execution. Also, the Royal Academy of Sciences was disbanded, and all the farmer generals, including Lavoisier, were arrested. It was not long before all the farmer generals were condemned to death. On May 8, 1794, Lavoisier was guillotined. 